thank you for playing that, Katie. I was hoping for a little <laughs> bit clearer, but that's okay. Everybody <laughs> will make sure that the song is uh, in the comment section. Welcome to Conscious Art Solutions. My name is Ida Farhat, and I have my special guests, Michael Lee Hill and Shane Chima. Broya. Very good. Thank you. Welcome you. Welcome to both of you. I'm super excited uh, tonight. I've waited a couple months uh, for this show. Uh, these two guys have, uh, you know, hold a great, a special place in my heart for sure. I've learned so much from both of you. Uh, while I've known Michael quite a bit longer, Shane, I hold just as much um, high regard and respect for you and your work and the lectures that you do with Linda McGillis. I appreciate you both. Um, so we're going to open tonight. The show is on the Anunnaki and the seeding of humankind. And uh, I don't think I could have two better uh, people to have this uh, roundtable discussion with um, who we are, where we come from, our, uh, the different star nations, the seeding of Mother Earth, Gaia, some call Terra, um, our, uh, our own um, experiences that you know, the, the memories are in our own DNA. So the experiences that we've had that have um, brought us to the place where we're at is a, as a civiliz civilization um, with, you know, the awakening in 2012. I know, Michael, that you and I discussed on um, the last show about uh, it being 2016 rather than 2012. We can maybe mention that um, during the show because some people may not be aware or see it from a different perspective. So I'm going to open the show. Michael, Michael Lee Hill, thank you for coming on. Uh, yep. Welcome. Welcome. So let's thank first you, start with you and who you, you know, if you want to share a little bit of your background with uh, the guests or with the, I'm sorry, I'm a little startled. I have a new puppy guys and I keep thinking about him barking and you know, mm -hmm. my attention going to him and I really don't want that. So it's making me a little anxious. Um, but Michael, if you'll go ahead and share a little bit about yourself and then we'll move to Shane and, and then we'll open it up to go further into our topic. Right on. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And uh, my name is Michael Lee Hill. I guess the reason I'm here is uh, it all started for me because I live very close to Lake Erie in Ohio. Um, near Cleveland, and I started seeing these orbs of light over the lake, and I started to film them, and my footage went viral, and that brought the History Channel to my door, and uh, they ended up doing a show for the UFO Hunters episode, uh, Alien Contact, and um, at first, it was only supposed to be like five minutes, but what had happened is they interviewed another contactee, his name was Terrell Copeland, and he had filmed the same UFOs, these orbs of light, chariots of fire, whatever you want to call them. Uh, he had filmed the same thing and it got the same spiritual message, kind of like the law of attraction. You know, uh, you get what you focus upon. There is no other main rule kind of idea. Uh, and um, began to have the same type of contact. So the History Channel, being pretty smart, they said, wow. These two guys that don't even know each other, you know, what if this other guy ends up with the same unknown blood anomaly? Because the military, um, Terrell Copeland was a Marine and he was been sent, sent overseas and he went through a thorough medical workup and they looked into his blood and found out he had an unknown blood anomaly. And uh, so they thought, would it be weird if these two guys ended up with the same unknown rare blood anomaly? that had the exact same UFOs film, same story of contact. So they asked me if I would fly to Boston to have my blood work done by a Harvard professor. His name was David Sistrom. And in that show, uh, it was revealed by this Harvard professor that I don't have normal human blood. And sure enough, it was exactly like Terrell Copeland's. Actually, it's an increase in an enzyme called creatine kinase, which brings chi or prana into the bloodstream to facilitate healing. So uh, that was really weird because that's as weird sounding to me as it is to anyone else. And they're like, well, yeah, you have the blood anomaly as well, see ya. I'm like, wait a minute, man. This isn't just a TV show anymore. What are you talking about? 
And um, actually, he wasn't really nice about it. He goes, what do you think unknown means? He said, I, if I had to venture a guess, I would think that there was a virus at play that is not known to mankind, and it's tricking your brain into releasing these massive amounts of creatine kinase. The normal amount of creatine kinase in the bloodstream is 25 parts per liter of blood. What they found was 2,100 in mine. So what they said was my blood was being super oxygen, oxygenated. That's hard to say. Um, and which brings a lot of chi and prana into my bloodstream. And um, so that is what happened with both of all being met by the Anunnaki themselves. The show aired in the spring of uh, 2008. And in the summer of 2008, I went to a festival called Sirius Rising. I didn't know anything about the Anunnaki at the time. I didn't know they were Syrian, uh, but sure enough. So when I went there, they were waiting to meet me. I'm talking in the flesh. There was, wasn't nothing against channeling or anything, but this is me talking to you. You know what I mean? Like I'm in front of these people. And they said, we want to talk to you about this unknown blood anomaly that the History Channel revealed because it's an indicator that you're of our hybrid bloodline that was known as the Nephilim in the Bible. And I was like, what are you even talking about? You know, I didn't, in 2008, there was no ancient aliens on TV. I didn't know even what an Anunnaki was. They, they told me, in your past, we've been known as the Anunnaki. And in your past, you were known as Ia Inki, the water bearer. And none of that made any sense to me. Um, but we can get into it now, especially the water bearer part. They've given me technology that's based on cosmic harmonious frequencies. NASA just got involved and yes, yes. And uh, they found, lo and behold, it does bring through photonic light energy from another dimension. That's their words. Uh, we can get into that, but you know, simultaneously I was contacted by the NSA reverse engineering division that's already in technology transfer programs with multiple races of extraterrestrials. And uh, they brought me into the fold because they knew I had, they called it a handshake. You know, like I have an Anunnaki counterpart to my human meat suit. And um, so that began, that was all in 2008. So it's been quite a, a journey since then. And, um, but that'll do in a nutshell for here. We can get into um, some of the newer stuff that's unfolding, but Okay. I'm looking forward to hearing what Shane's got to share. So wow, I wanted to say that um, I actually watched those episodes back and I remember you now. Ah, right on. I had short hair <laughs> and I was a big old baby. If they would have told me I was going to have my blood work done, I would have said, no, I do not like needles, you know? Yeah. But when I got there, it was too late, you know? <laughs> I had to act like a big boy. Wow. Well, um, that's just amazing, Michael. Yeah, yeah, because I remember, I actually remember watching that those episodes. There was actually a few episodes, if I remember correctly. Yeah, well, you know, it's cool because no one knows this, but um, because the UFO Hunter show was shut down, but what was in the works is to take me and Terrell to all kinds of sacred sites all over the planet and to see what happens when we went there, which I'm doing anyhow. I We can get into, I begin, I've begun work with the Native American First Nations, going to sacred sites and these mound sites and doing ceremony. Um, but yeah, um, it's been quite a trip for sure. <laughs> yeah. Shane, do you mind sharing? Uh, we wanna hear about you as well. Sure. Shane, welcome. Yeah, yeah thank you, Ida. For joining uh -huh. us. Yeah, thank you, Ida. And Michael, thank you so much for um, your service and uh, what you have to offer humanity and um, the, the cosmic dream beyond. So thank you. Uh, well, um, thank you. My name is Shane, everybody. It's um, Ida. Again, thank you for having me. Um, I am here um, among humanity as a representative as well. Um, my um, intent of being is to help liberate and free consciousness from the matrix that has been created by us together to um, the matrix being that which was needed that um, 
to help facilitate um, the origin and the formation of our soul, which is in progress. And the way that I do that or will do that is through the power of language. And language is what brought everything into being as we know it. Um, in fact, the universe itself is language. Um, what's beautiful and unique about language is obviously there's many different languages that, you know, uh, uh, cer certain birds would chirp a certain way and they obviously they have their different language, but even humanity, to all the different languages. But there was actually a base language called the Akasha or the Akashic language or the Akashic alphabet. And when we say that when we use the term Akasha, we are talking about space. So the Akasha or the Akashic language is the encoding or the language of space and how to bring form and manifestation into space. So that I would say is my, um, is what I bring into the cosmic creation. Um, and I wish to give that information freely and help humanity to begin to um, regain the tools of perception so that we can use language to decipher the intent and the origin and the meaning in everything. I mean, everything. So obviously tonight I can, I will help do, I will help to do that by um, facil facilitating a discussion and um, a further realization of what the actual term Anunnaki is in the uh, Akashic alphabet. And when we say alphabet, what we are talking about is the Aleph and the, the Bet. So the beginning rulings of creation being the Aleph and the Bet being the house of creation. And the Bet or the B or the Beta in Greek is composed of three Vobs and the Vobs is the sixth Akashic ladder. Those three Vobs, six, 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 create the house of consciousness. Of course, that's the carbon atom. And to further the discussion that Michael brought up about um, maybe what we personally have been through, um, when I was a child, um, I had contact with um, not beings from out there but beings that came from the quantum into our reality. So these things were, would be, were spheres, but they were, but they didn't come from like outside, like out, like from another star system per se. All that I could say is that they come from, they came from the atomic substrate of matter. And I presume from their, local viewpoint out into the macrocosm where we preside. But again, that's just, maybe that's incorrect in, um, analysis by me. Um, so that all being said, um, that's, you know, that's kind of what I would like to discuss tonight. And again, the Akashic language, the Akashic alphabet, um, is my um, gift to humanity and what I have to offer. And hopefully I can contribute tonight to the discussion in a meaningful and profound way. I trust I you. can ask you a question real quick. You know what? I've never done a show actually much with another person. So sometimes I'm like, man, I want to ask him something. I don't know if that's even right, but I was wondering where, uh, if you could share your journey of how this knowledge came through, like, was it a remembering or were you guided? Uh, if that makes any sense. Yeah, guided. So, uh, Michael, I would really like to show you, um, maybe um, at a different point, I can show you uh, um, this whole thing with the with Lyra and the pyramid, this pyramid that's constructed by basically connecting at the apex, the um, alpha star of the Lyra constellation, which is Vega, and then connecting to the uh, alpha star of the Aquila constellation then connecting to the alpha star of the Ophiuchus, the serpent bear constellation, and then 
connecting to the alpha star of the Corona Borealis constellation. And by doing that, you create the image of a perfect pyramid. Um, I originally did that in 2013 uh, based on, again, it's not that uh, beings or anything were sitting down with me and having a conversation. I somehow jet was able to generate the information of putting this together. But anyways, in 20, early 2016, I said, um, in a, and I, the Facebook uh, post still exists actually, you know, um, basically saying, you know, you can um, expect our arrival, Lyra 017 in the year 2017. And it was uh, October 18th, uh, October 19th of 2017, uh, uh, 2017 that Oumuamua was discovered. Um, the beautiful thing about an object like that, so Oumuamua means like basically bringer of Genesis or the first, the first from the heavens to come. It's Hawaiian um, origin, the name. Yeah, boy, do we got some stuff to talk about. But anyway, well, and, and I have something to share about that too, which I've shared, I mean. But anyways, so yeah, obviously space is three dimensional, but to, it's two dimensional from our perspective. So you can use, um, you can use it like a Stellarium program or any other um, professional astronomical program to basically at least two dimensionally see where the um, origin point of the object is. And the origin point of o Oumuamua would perfectly mix up the eye of the pyramid. If you look like a dollar bill, that's the origin, but not only is that the origin, but where it went was also discussed in that post in 2016. And, and that was very close to the star Sarah, which is a star Alpharats in the square of Pegasus uh, constellation. So how I knew that, I don't know. Um, but uh, nevertheless, um, it's beautiful because it's tangible. Um, it's very tangible um, data and information that everybody can see, feel, touch, and share, and kind of understand and know about. So, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, I guess my answer to your question, Michael, is I, you know, um, I don't know necessarily. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just making sure that it's looking good make sure that I have it on my um my Facebook page because I want everybody to see this show. Um, hey, your necklace looks nice, by the way. Thank you. It's, I love yeah, it. It's beautiful. Yeah. And, and I get a lot of compliments on it. And I tell everybody, well, you know, Michael, I told you my friend that owns the CBD cafe. I was a long time ago when you and I, I think, first did, did our the first show, the, the show that I in, interviewed you a while back. And I said, oh, I've got this great guest coming on. His name's Michael Lee Hill. And he's been and she's like, oh my God, I know who he is. I watched him on Ancient Aliens and, you know. Yeah, I had no that idea I, that Michael, yeah. this is the Michael E. Hill. I, you know, yeah. but I can tell you, I watched those episodes and was um, out of all the episodes, I really, because the orbs, again, what I'm, what I experienced was spheres, but they were the orbs, but they were very small and silvery. And like, you know, you're looking, I mean, you're talking at the microscope scopic level but um, mm -hmm. but the orb still that still res it resonates a lot and um yeah yeah and so I, yeah, like, I guess it, there's if you're, if you're hyper dimensional you know i guess size doesn't even matter much you, yeah you know, exactly it, it doesn't whatever size you want to be <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah okay so uh where do you want okay so shane do you want to share screen and because well the Biggest reason I thought about both of you two was the eight point at seven point at eight point at star because I know both of you speak uh, to that and are highly learned in um, those um, the sacred geometry and and the uh, um, crop circles of them and their purpose and binary codes. Michael, you had Inky come through. Uh, there's just so much to I don't want to talk much. I say that all the time and then I end up talking. So I'm just going to kind of fall back and really let you guys kind of go back and forth. And well, if you don't yeah. mind, uh, 
just because a mua mua was brought up, there is something that I want to share, and that is my recent work with um, NASA's Richard C. Hoagland. Uh, do you guys know who he is? I know who he is. Right on. Uh, well, you know, he asked me a couple of years ago to come on his show, and um, he said, we know your story sounds batshit crazy to most other people, but NASA has been looking into how energy flows multidimensionally. They call it hyperdimensional physics um, for a very long time. And it just so happens that your numbers that you're bringing to the table, this 432 based math and physics is right on the money. So I'd like for you to come on my radio show. So, man, it you know, this was crazy to me because he was a hero of mine, you know, during my journey, when I needed answers, I was led to Hoagland, you know, and his work on Mars and whatnot. But uh, so during the show, uh, he says, you know, I'd like to arrange NASA to look into these crystal creations that you're doing. And so he did, which was mind blowing. And sure enough, they found that they open up a hole through the fabric of our space time and bring through an increase of photonic light energy into our realm. But this then evolved to the point where just recently, last Christmas, he calls me and he says, Michael, people don't know this, but you know, when Oumuamua came through, we started receiving what we think is messages. Now we're not sure if the messages are actually coming from Oumuamua, but it seems like it, but they, they're definitely otherworldly and they're definitely coming in from another dimension, this information. And the interesting thing was it was coming in on 432 megahertz. And um, so he brought me Pretty into awesome. the, yeah, right? I was like, well, okay. So using a large antenna array, kind of like the movie Contact, right? Um, I was brought into the team to actually construct a, uh, a transmission that we were gonna try to communicate with a mua mua and or whatever's listening, right? And um, so this started Christmas night of uh, this, well, last year. And it's ongoing to this point, but the point is we've received responses. And to the point that it's it's pretty much scientifically not debatable now that we've, we're in contact with something. And um, to the point that just, I don't know, about two weeks ago, George Norrie had Richard Hoagland come on coast to coast and talk about these responses. So just because you brought up a mua mua, there's still something huge happening with a mua mua. And um, I, I've heard some different theories that it might be some type of AI that I'm just throwing, I'm not even saying I subscribe to this point of view, but one theory was that it's collecting the data that these orbs are collecting all over the planet and it's the retrieval of this information. I don't know, who knows, right? But uh, I just want to share that because it's ongoing and it's happening right now. And here in a little bit, if you want to know what kind of responses have been coming through these large antenna arrays from something not from here, and they're letting us know, you know we're in, we are in communication. That's exciting. Wow. Yeah, that's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I wish I would have been prepared. I could, you know, if I took the time, maybe next time that you're speaking, I'll, I'll go um, so that Michael could see the uh, Pyramid of Lyra. Have you seen, have you seen it, Ida? I have not. Unless you shared it in our last show. Uh, I know you shared some things and, you know, it was a lot and that was kind of a, um, that was a, that was a show that I tried to follow along with, with, and I was kind of getting um, a little distracted um, with it. So uh, if I don't know if you shared it the last time, but you're more than, I mean, please share whatever it is that you want to share with us. I would love to, to see your presentation, what you have to. to well, yeah. Yeah. When, um, when Michael's speaking next time, uh, I'll pull it up. I don't want to like, because you know what I mean? I, I got so many folders. Um, well, I know we don't have much of a structure. I kind of just wanted this just to be a, a, a good, 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 good. An open round it. discussion. We don't have to be stiff with it. You know, every time we have a show, just, you know, we I can mean, like we're sitting around a table. The, <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha. you. 
What was that, Mike? Well, I'm sorry. Like I said, I, I look at it like we're sitting around a coffee table. Yeah, you know, exactly. We're having it a conversation. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Friends. That's okay. Great. Very good. All right. Good. Um, so let's go back here. Um, let me share screen real quick. Katie said it. Okay. Up. Everybody can see. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So as you can see, um, so you would connect, you connected it uh, by using the Alpha Star of Lyra, the Lyra constellation, Altair, the Alpha Star of Aquila, um, Ragalog, which is the Alpha Star of Fucus, and then I forget what the star is, the Alpha Star of Corona Borealis. As you can see, Hercules, the constellation actually makes up the, the grand gallery in the Kings and Queens chamber would be in here. The serpent, this the serpent here is the serpent's constellation, which Opucus is holding. That's actually the representation of the Sphinx. And this is the true, this is what the pyramid of Khufu actually represents on a, at least on one of its layers. There's many layers of meaning. This we can um, definitely now it's been, you know, like the prophecy of the one dollar bill is kind of fulfilled. But the origin point of Omuamua is exactly right here, Michael. Right where I'm pointing my arrow, right here. So anybody can um, use any professional and then um, any professional program that they would like and uh, you would see that. So it's, um, it's amazing. Um, and obviously we'll get into this, the whole, you know, the serpent and kind of what it meant in Egypt and obviously why it was represented as a sphinx or part, partly represented as are with the Sphinx and uh, so on and so forth. But this is it. Um, I think I could, if maybe there's another, um, I had another one, I just don't remember where. What do you think of Mua Mua is? What do I think it is here? Hold mm -hmm. on, stop sharing the screen here. So we can go back. Okay, there we go. Um, well, I think, A, it's preparing humanity for contact, okay? So um, that being said, I think that's where the coronavirus kind of comes into play, um, which is, I know, for most people odd to think about. But um, if there's going to be contact on a biological level, like literally, like, you know, human beings meeting up with another biological entity, um, both immune systems are gonna have to be ready for it. Um, we carry all the bacteria that humans carry, um, viruses that we carry. Um, that's, that's why when we go to the moon or we go to, if, when we go to Mars, um, you know, we will be very careful not to contaminate, um, you know, those planets with, with our bacteria and the viruses, et cetera. I think that's part of it. Um, and obviously, if we think about the, tra the trajectory of Omama, Oumuamua and how fast it's moving, it would have had to leave its destination point, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years ago. So this is like a well-calculated uh, mission. And then by the way, it's, going where it's where it's at going to is um very near the star of Sarah. and uh i have a feeling that um there might be a genesis um point um happening there or an origin point of genesis happening there um as well and very near the star of Sarah. by the way there's a song um it's like, a, it's kind of like a heavy metal song, actually. I just found that like three weeks ago when I was looking through it. But those are some of the thoughts I have on it anyways. Right on. Yeah. It's mysterious for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you said a point of civil, uh, civilization. Um, so are you guys in agreement that we've, we're what on their our fifth or sixth uh, seeding of this of this plane of existence, Mother Earth, uh, our Michael. Our, that sounds about right. You know, yeah. uh, matter of fact, you know, I was talking. Ar Borden was the head of that remote viewing, reverse engineering division I was brought into, and uh, 
you know, we were talking one night because, you know, we went up against the transhumanists and stopped them with a depopulation agenda plan that they had in 2012. And, um, you know, it's a very interesting subject because, you know, depopulation, well, you know, the fact of the matter is, um, you know, overpopulation is a horrible, horrible thing. And, um, but genocide is a horrible thing. So what do you do? And that meaning, you know, in 1950, this planet was populated to 2.5 billion people. And it took all the time and history that we know of to populate it to 2.5 billion people. Right now it's at what? Going on 8 billion? That's in 70 years or whatever. We've more, it's the rate is exponential of the, 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 you know, the expansion of the population rate and it's not sustainable. And when the planet is over, overpopulated, it's going to be a horrible situation. Um, but I asked AR, I said, well, it seems to me in a garden, you know, a flower is going to have the most pods on it before, you know, they go out into its environment and repopulate. And I said, it seems to me that we're at that place that if we could get our mental energy off of war and negative thought forms and put all that focus into exploring inner and outer space, that we could probably get off this planet. And not that we can't come back, you know, but, you know, we could start to explore our environment more. And he said, um, would it surprise you to know that wouldn't be the first time? I thought that was very, you know, interesting because that's exactly what you're talking about is some previous civilization has gotten to the point that they've evolved to the point that they could leave, you know. Um, I heard that everything is based on the precessional cycle and that's, uh, you know, 26,920 year cycle, very long cycle. And um that cycle is the one we're in, talking about where the, they're called boxoons. And a boxoon is what is the long count for the Mayan calendar. And there are 144,000 days each. And the Mayan calendar ended with the 13th boxoon. So that's why everyone was saying, oh, it's the end of the world, you know, because it, it ends on the 13th boxoon. Well, there's no 14th boxoon because, um, weird my door just opened did you see that there's no one there <laughs> um there's no 14th Bach tune because it's truly the first Bach tune of the age of Aquarius so the it's not doom and gloom it's just the ending of the age of Pisces and the entry into the age of Aquarius of the um uh, age of Aquarius but I can tell you, I started to learn that their whole system of timekeeping that they've given us, meaning even look at how many seconds is in 12 hours, because, uh, you know, the precessional cycle is the longest cycle of time we keep that 25,920. But uh, look at the lowest, and that's 60, right? Um, 60 seconds in an hour, uh, 60 I mean, 60 seconds in a minute and then 60 minutes to an hour. Well, look at how many seconds is in 12 hours. It's 43,200 or 432. Um, they've been encoding this information for a very long time, waiting for us because it will, it's already shown that it leads to unlimited free energy. Because I've proved now with NASA that it brings through this frequency, brings through an increase of photonic light energy. Photons is matter. It's something from nothing. It is LERM. You know, LERM is what they, the NSA called the instant manifestation of physical matter from light, light encoded reality matrix. But because of this, knowing that they encoded time with 432, all for 432 based math and physics all resolve to nine, meaning four plus three plus two equals nine. It's lower octave, 216, 2 plus 1 plus 6 is 9, then 108, 9. 108 is interesting because Tibetan monks have 108 prayer beads on their prayer bracelets, and they'll repeat and chant, you know, 
mantras for 108 times. But as you go down, you know, 54, 28, it all resolves to nine. So I'm watching the movie 2012 and I'm about having a panic attack. I think it's bringing up cellular memory, you know, of that event. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, 2012, that's a five. That can't be the end of the calendar. That's not how they kept time. So I just went forward in time and I found the next date that resolved to nine and it was 2016. But sure enough, uh, then I think it was in 2017, they encoded a crop circle with a seven pointed star, which I know we're going to get into. I'm excited about that. It's totally a part of their communication to me. And it's a part of I'm involved with a documentary on the Mitchell Hedges crystal skull, and it just gave a message to humanity. And that was a seven pointed star and the words morning star. But anyhow, um, so that seven pointed yeah. star crop circle is surrounded by 14 of those Bach tunes, which is the long Mayan calendar count. So I knew each one was 144,000 days long so i'm like well what happens if you just take 14 times 144,000 you'll find out it's 2016000000000000000 it's 2016 so they're telling us the accurate date into the age of aquarius now when i met the anunnaki they told me their whole succession of kingship and the way that they related to mankind was based on the precessional cycle and the moment we entered the first second of the age of Aquarius accurately, that this experiment to accelerate human conscious evolution by making us experience our own mental energy in an unbiased fashion, because we weren't, as far as the Pleiadian way of looking forward into the future, future sight, 99 out of 100 times mankind didn't make it because we evolved technologically faster than spiritually, and we ended up aiming our weapons at ourselves and you know, so they, being the Anunnaki Pleiadian side, but what could be done to help? And part of it was the Ark, you know, but uh, the whole myth of that. Um, but they, the Pleiadians were like, well, look, Inky, you know, if we save this race that, you know, you say has so much potential, um, 99 out of 100 times they self-implode. So why waste the energy? to save this race. And so they went back to the think tank and they came out with this, a new idea that what if mankind had to experience their own mental energy in an, uh, an accelerated rate unbiasedly. If you put out love, you get back love tenfold. If you put out fear, you get back fear tenfold. Theoretically, it would make you burn through your shadow work and uh, transmute because you know the Anunnaki understand thoughts have an electromagnetic reality, um, energy. And energy can't be created or destroyed. It needs to be transmuted. Well, how do you transmute a negative thought form? I haven't heard many people ask the question. And it's, you live it. You know, it comes up in each one of our own personal realities for you to cho choose love, choose something different than the fear base, because it wouldn't be recirculating in your life if uh, you had transmuted it already. It's like the stuff that hasn't been transmuted, it'll keep recirculating in your reality. And you go, why does the same shit keep happening to me? You know, it's different people, but it's the same thing. It's because those energies have not been transmuted. So there's part of the Anunnaki, it's their spiritual job. I call them team bad cop because they reflect back that negative polarity. If you need a negative lesson, they're very adept at making you experience the folly of your own mental energy. And um, truly in hopes you'll change it. And because the only way that energy can be transmuted is for you to know, you know, what else is available? That's what I learned to ask, you know, because it gets into a deep subject, but we're all connected to the mass consciousness. And even if you've done all your own spiritual homework, you're still connected. And so uh, the first thought forms that enter your head are from the mass consciousness for about the first 15 seconds. You know, we're listening more than thinking. We think we're thinking, you know, but it's really the mass consciousness is mass thought forms coming in. And, uh, you know, you got to train your, if you accept those, because they're more than likely going to be filled with fear and doubt, because there's a lot of fear and doubt in the mass consciousness right now. If you don't 
say, all right, thank you for showing me what I got a fear stamp on, what else is available? But what else is available is what severs your that connection and allows you to become a co-creator and create something new. And I heard Bruce Lee had the same idea that when he would have a feeling of fear or doubt, he would write it on a piece of paper and burn it, give it back to the universe and say, all right, now what else is available? Thank you, you know? And I think that's an important thing for everyone, especially in the heat of the moment. And when, you know, you're being triggered by your own lower thought forms, you think, oh, I'm getting screwed again. You know, oh, this is happening again. To stop yourself mid thought and go, thank you. What else is available? Because that's how you free yourself from that, loop but uh yeah i'll just leave it at that i think i went off on a rant no, <laughs> you're okay michael yes yeah, yeah. so you know i've been using that since i first learned that from you i don't know it's been a long time and it works really well for me yeah you gotta I, come I've up actually shared it with other people for them oh, to be right able on. to use it as well so yeah i think I however know. you need to do it you know, there could be a million ways, like Bruce Lee got the writing on paper thing, whatever you can do to understand, you're not at the mercy of those first thought forms. Just pay attention, you know, respect it, you know, and matter of fact, you can start to gauge it of where the mass consciousness is in because, you know, just don't make any decision off those thought forms and just pay attention to what's being said. And then I heard after 15 seconds, your higher self can start to bring in info. And you'll get divine guidance coming in instead of mass consciousness guidance. Because most of the time, the mass consciousness is not going to guide you. You know, what if it's all, you know, peace, love, and happiness, then by all means, accept it. Because, you know, you start to understand the only thing Team Bad Cop has is to work with is fear. So it becomes very easy to spot the influence of team bad cop um man i gotta say though i don't think that they're even at play anymore because you know, like i said the second we enter the age of aquarius which was december 21st 2016 that old experiment to accelerate human conscious evolution was done and over would either have you know learned our lesson or we wouldn't can, can, can i speak to that so shane you you hear what he's saying he's suggesting and and i kind of definitely follow along with you know i i i only agree to it because i know my own experience so so when i first heard michael mention this i was watching one of the one of his uh shows a show he was on and he had mentioned 2016 and i was taken back because i was taken in 2014 off world i know that for sure or in a you know underground bunker i don't know what the hell but I was taken. And when I was returned, I kept signing everything I would sign was 2016, but it was 2014. And I was worried that people were going to think I was something was wrong with me because I was going through all these of being targeted, my house getting broken into and military jumping out. And so now they've got me in this, you know, um, paranoia state wondering, you know, if they're going to try and haul me off to the mental uh, institution somewhere. But I knew there were, my point is, I knew there was something to the 2016. And I think, I'm thinking that maybe in 2014, we were behind. And you know how, like, Michael, you talked about the uh, record and the timelines that go around. I think they skipped us from one timeline, pushing us into another. If that makes sense. I don't know if I'm saying that. Absolutely. Properly. I can tell you the work I did with the NSA, you know, with the um, with that team was to change the timeline in 2012 because they said all scientific data was pointing towards a doom and gloom transit of Nibiru. And not only that, in 2012, there was some events coming up where... Uh, Team Bad Cop was going to be creating some weather, and it ended up they, they did. It was uh, Hurricane Sandy and Earthquake Charlotte that created a tsunami on the left side of the United States and sent a tsunami 20-foot um, wall of water towards Hawaii. And part of the, that's, 
the hurricane was being guided artificially into New York. And um, that was part of the test game was to suss up to the table to talk with the Anunnaki, but you just can't ask them to fix your shit, you know? You got to come up with some type of um, um, solution yourself, even if it's wrong, you know? You got you to gotta come up with your best idea. And so our best idea that we could come up with, can you please change your trajectory as you enter? You know, if it's possible to change the planet Nibiru. By the way, we'll talk about the Anunnaki. They told me that's our word for them. And they told me what they consider their name for themselves. But um, uh, so 2012, uh, what you'll find is because of the work, Planet Nibiru came through earlier than expected. It was 2003. And Nassim Harriman actually has released a video from Soho, you know, the sun satellite of this giant object that was, I think it was four times the size of Saturn. And as it entered our solar system, the sun burst out this huge coronal mass ejection, you know, solar flare, and just engulfed this planet. And he said no one was informed of this because they just thought we're toast. This size of a planet coming through the middle of our solar system should have disrupted all of the planet's weather systems, tectonic plates, uh, electromagnetic fields. It should have wreaked havoc. And they said this object, when it came through, it was going to pass between... If it passes between Mars, Jupiter, I believe, I'd have to look at this data, but then we got a buffer and we can survive it because every time it passes through in 3,600 years, it's not catastrophic. So what makes it a not survivable transit is if it passes between Mars and Earth. Now we got nothing to buffer our self from, you know, its effects. And, you know, Nassim Harriman said we're floating in grace because something took care of us. Um, yeah, something stepped in and it seems like A.R. Borden said, we're going to get the hell out of Dodge, but take Dodge with us. I think that they used the sun to create a large magnetic field that took, uh, Nibiru out of our space-time continuum. And, uh, and, you know, this is really weird, but, uh, the Anunnaki came to me and said, we want you to know that the work you did is created the Mandela effect. So I'm really sorry we screwed up your movies. But uh, that's a joke. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, they said they told me how to fix it too. They said to fix this is they said the timeline you've ripped in is so far out of the box of mass consciousness. Their bigger picture box, you're you're just ripped it to shreds, and um, so it's causing a lot of temporal disturbances, and you need to get more people through ceremony into your view of the bigger picture and it's a much love filled one you know because we are living in grace and if you don't understand that something has went out of its way to help us um we'll, we'll find out soon enough right you know uh michael i i had an experience where i saw the um solar flare uh it was like pulsing just like pumping pulsing light pumping out of the the sun. It was absolutely magical. I can't even describe <laughs> what I saw. They told me uh, they can control yeah. those outbursts. They can control, because truly, you know how many have happened that if they would have been facing this earth, it would have been catastrophic. But something is making, you know, making, making sure it's going to go in the other direction. Um, so yeah, I, I never knew that they could control such a thing, but it seems to be the case. Well, uh, so I so one of the the being that I um, engaged when I went on my astral travel, one of them had a ring on. I think I shared this with you, Michael. I don't know, but because I want I kind of want to redirect it back to the Anunnaki and the seating and who's who, and of course Shane, you would be able to speak to this as well as far as far as the data that you've come across and what you've received and, and your, um, 
your knowledge on Eden and what that means and Adam and Eve and Adams and so forth. But I do believe this is my personal perspective that, well, I just know it. It's not a belief that the stories of Adam, there were an Adam and there was an Eve and there were people that, that uh, were these characters, so to speak. There, there were there was a family. It was a family. Uh, Anu had um, a wife and a cop, cop, concubine. Is that how you say it? Wow. Uh, yeah. Canadian. Yeah. And as my mother. Yes. And her name was Ida. Yeah. I don't know if you're aware of that. Yeah. No. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yes. Her name was Ida. Uh, Dan Winters shares a lot about that. Um, it's been confirmed to me who I am. Like. I know exactly who I am. Oh, is that uh, you? Not to be that is me. Oh. That's right. So I am one of the nine women that hold the Magdalen DNA. And but there's only one Eve on the planet. And Eve and Magar means sex. So this being that I met with, uh, I saw his face. I was bringing him something for his birthday, or a cake, pastry, something of that that sort. And I saw the person, and this person is on the planet. I've shared it with you offline. Um, and I seen him, and then as quick as I turned around, I seen a man sitting in a chair, a king's chair, and all I could see was from his elbow down. And I saw a ring on his hand, and I said, I don't think the people know the power of that ring. And I woke up, and that day, not even an hour, two hours later, this person was on picture with that ring pointing out and in that underneath that ring there's codes for the matrix um so we know that anu um yeah so you're half pleiadian half reptilian and then we know that the draco the dragon side of the dracos uh the mother of enlil um Well, you could share more about that. So go ahead and share what you, because I could go on with what what I've been able to um, put together. And I'm not saying that I have it all factual, you know, correct, but I definitely know I'm going down the right. Yeah. And, uh, and then I would love for you also to chime in when you feel called to, uh, Shane, to speak to, you know, let's just have a open discussion well you do you want me to uh first i want to show you guys one thing here quick now when i share the screen can you see the all the every you can see this so just so everybody gets an idea so this is a picture taken so this is just like a sliver of the sky if you remove the earth all of these stars go all the way around 360 degrees so this is another way of seeing the the pyramid and then obviously the exact point of Omama, so uh, Omuamu, I should say. And by the way, quickly, the Michael, the dollar, yes, the dollar yeah. my cosmic name is Mu. So I thought that was when I first when he when when I first uh, did a show with Shane. Nobody knew that, and then he started talking about Mu Mu, and I'm like, okay, wait a minute, is this you know what am I supposed to be putting together here? Um, I thought that was kind of interesting. Anyways. Yeah, so right let's go, th let me just go through the uh, linguistic right. a little bit. Right. Yeah. So um, the correct way to look at the word Anunnaki, um, first of all, we could, you, you identified correctly. So the offspring of An and Ki. Now what's funny with Sumerian slash Akkadian slash Babylonian mythology is that um, they, well, it's, they have on as heaven and key as earth. So it's kind of different than the story of Genesis because Adam, the male represents the earth and Eve represents the spirit, but it's the same thing. One on or key. So on is the heaven key is the earth, earth in this case, um, or if you will, one is the proton, one is the electron of the atom or the atom. Um, but anyway, so let's look at, let's break everything down. So the A obviously is the, is the Aleph or the Alpha, right? The first Greek 
the Greek letter Aleph, and then Aleph is the first Akashic um, letter. And A, the A is um, represents Taurus, and we'll get into that more. And then if you look at the Taurus constellation, constellation, it's actually a chromosome, kind of like an X kind of figure, um, so to speak. Um, and then the noon, right, is the Egyptian hieroglyph for either a serpent or a frog, uh, kind of a frog fist, a uh, frog faced being. But one of the original eight in the Ogdode, which is again back to the eight, the eight um, primordial creators. Um, obviously, the noon or the is the fourteenth Akashic letter, um, or if you will, the building block that encodes space. And it represents the Scorpio slash Ophiuchus constellation. Remember, Ophiuchus is the serpent bearer. Um, Nak. So when we when we when we look at the term Nak, or we also remember Enoch. Um, um, let me actually be able to move, move this down here. Um, or Nakash. Nakash is the serpent or the shining one that um, basically came to Eve in the Garden of Eden. And, you know, what was what happened there was Akash, the shining one, the serpent, um, basically all the only thing that the being did was ask Eve, the spirit, a question. The question was, and the Elohim said, you shall not eat from the tree of immortality or knowledge. So it was a question that was asked. And then obviously the rest is um, history as the Elohim will go on to basically kick Adam and Eve, the form, the physical form, the spirit out of the Garden of Eden or quote unquote, the paradise. And then obviously the last part of the, the word Anunnaki is E or Ki, which is earth and, re and references the uh, constellation Virgo, obviously virgin earth. Um, yeah, we went over this, the Akashic alphabet, the encoding of space. Um, Anunnaki is one way of saying it, but even a more precise way would be Anun Anuna. And basically you would have the noon in the center, which is the serpent. And you have the chromosome on one side, Aleph, the chromosome on the other side. So it's the blending of two DNAs. What those DNAs, I, I well, we know one of them is definitely the serpent, but what is the other one? We don't know. And by the way, um, I have all this here. If I go to presentation, when we look at, and this is, that's actually not the one I want. Um, yeah, let's bring up this one. That's actually not the one I want yet either. Um, this is the one. So you can see these headdresses. These are representations of horns here, as you can, you know, as can be seen. Um, and obviously, here's a chromosome. Here's a two-strand DNA, obviously, right? Uh, let's go out of that. And then this is the Aleph, right? So the dividing line. Oh, by the way, Enlil or Marduk is the, it represents the one that divided Tiamat. So Tiamat is the center space here and divided and divided it into two, heaven and earth, or if you will, divided heaven and earth, or if you will, when we speak of the Genesis story, um, uh, and the Elohim divided the light from the darkness and obviously saw that it was good. Um, so there, and then if we were to just go look at the Taurus constellation, we can see that it's basically, it's basically is, this is the Aleph or the Alpha and also looks just like a chromosome. So I wanna show that, but uh, let's go back to the, 
So it's real quickly, uh, Shane, it's my understanding that, well, Adam and Eve, so we're, we're talking about the civil, civilization of the, um, when this planet was seeded, Adam and Eve, the parents that Anu with the two wives had both sides, uh, some would refer to as Cain and Abel or Ankian and Lil. Is there a correlation? Do either one of y'all know about that? Whether where the story with um with uh, Cain and Abel is that just another uh let's say watered down version of the Ankian and Lil um story hi history? I mean, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, well, that's after you know um yeah that you know that's another uh you know, famous kind of mythological depiction of a very pivotal point in, in the history of humanity. Um, but uh, I, I thought we would, you know, just focus on, um, you know, no, first that's all, fine. I, I'm just, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, no, just, just, you yeah. know, yeah. Let me no just finish with this here real quick. So, uh, oh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, and then, you know, Nun also was an ancient Egyptian god, right? So um, Nun's name means primeval waters, the waters of chaos. Again, that's a reference to Tiamat. And again, Marduk, you know, the whole story of, of Marduk was that Marduk basically took a bow, an arrow, and um, the arrow went inside Tiamat and broke Tiamat in two. Um, that's the same, that is the story of our DNA, that's the story of light and dark. That's the story of the first letter, as I showed, the, the Aleph or the Alpha. Um, that, you know, this, this neutral point or this, this border, if you will, this window. And then obviously on each side, if you look at an atom, right? You have the neutron, which is that middle section and you have a proton and an electron on each side. Um, and by the way, Mar well, we, we'd have to get in the Taurus part at first, but I just want to kind of go over this so that everybody kind of understands that the Anunnaki are definitely the people of the serpent. And they represent, um, you know, I don't know if, if you want to go as far as to say reptilian, but. Um, well, and some suggest that Lemuria was reptilians, and I, I don't know that I fully agree with that. I, I mean, I don't know. I know that. Isn't uh, all humans reptilian, really? Well, we yeah, all we have all have part of the brain. Or... Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I, I think what's going, I think what when we talk about the splitting of two, or remember the this uh and anuna, so a noon ah, um, really is the, the two chromosomes that we're talking about that were either split, if you want to think about it, because right, what does it talk about with Eve? And there was enmity that was put, um, that was placed between Eve, the spirit, and Nakash, or the serpent. Enmity means division. Yes. So you're seeing that division right here. But maybe in some strange sense, too, maybe it's also a, a mixture of the reptilian DNA with the mammalian DNA, the mammal and the reptile. So uh, it's my understanding that Adam took, he had his people and they went to, to the moon and Eve took, had her people and went to Mars. Um, I don't mean, I'm just trying to, like, I want to talk about, I'm hoping that we can really maybe get into some deeper discussions about the seeding of mother earth and who these beings were who they who they were who they are who who we are now i know that if you don't mind me saying i mean you have uh an awareness of the loki is that correct shane of what of what now loki. did you say loki or the last um, no no I, I just i did a, uh, we can get into it i would say that the elohim are the anunnaki and, and um they uh well 
yeah, maybe there are, maybe they aren't. It's confusing because right, the Garden of Eden story is that there's the quote unquote war in the heavens is really easy to understand. It's definitely between, okay, Nakash or, or the serpent and all that that represents and these and the Elohim, which planted the Garden of Eden. But here's the thing, they planted a Garden of Eden, but the serpent was already there. What's interesting is that in the Akashic language, the serpent is represented by the, the Lamed or the El. So when you, when you think about El, um, and the oldest star in the universe is called the Methuselah star. It's actually, astronomers believe it's about 2 billion years older than our universe. And that's found in the Libra constellation. So you can think of it as there was a hologram that was set up, but there was something existent in the hologram or in space before that garden or that hologram or that eight point of star was created. Um, and again, what happens is that um, there's a, a tree of life and a tree of knowledge. Obviously the tree of life is the, our sun, the tree of knowledge is the moon or sin. That's why it was called sin in, in Egyptian because the knowledge of immortality or the knowledge of the gods, gods was forbidden. Um, and you get into that with Taurus, right? Like the first um, depiction of the Akashic alphabet, uh, A, you know, the Aleph is the head of a bull, you know, but also it's the ox, the oxen, the ox to plow the fields by the sweat of your brows. By the way, that's the, what the Elohim told Adam and Eve told Eve, you, you will suffer greatly in your childbearing. And I told Adam, by the sweat of your brow, you will work the fields. So it's very strange because what the only thing that the, that the, the, the Nakash or the serpent did was ask Eve a question. And the Elohim said that you should not eat from the tree of immortality as like, kind of like in a straight, like a question, like that doesn't make sense. And so they did, and then obviously, in the end of in the end of that particular part of the story, um, you go on to see that uh, the Elohim uh, put the, the cherub the cherubim with the flaming sword going all the way around, guarding the way of the tree of life because they said the Elohim said, well, what if Adam and Eve, the form and the spirit reach out and take from the tree of knowledge or immortality and become like one of us. They didn't want that. So I've always been puzzled as to, you have 3.2 billion Christians on this planet right now. And Christians, when I say Christians, I'm talking about that would tell you that the serpent is Satan and that the Elohim is God. And, you know, um, I would question that. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Well, I, I definitely don't uh, buy into any religious dogma. I don't. I think there's great stories. I think that there's truth in all of the different religions. Well, sh well sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. just this specific. And, but story. No, I appreciate. The, well, I mean, it says that and they will make them in the image and likeness of us. And I say to people, who's the us? There's not one it's creator. Kind of <laughs> We're all right. And Mr. Anki here, he decided to give us a uh, a spark of his DNA or his uh, divine gift of being able to manifest um, and give us the the gift of um, the sovereignty. You know, really, I mean, I do you want to speak to that, Michael? I could add. Yeah, uh, sure. First of all, I want to say that, you know, with the NSA secret group, they, some of them refer to the Anunnaki as the Anuna. So that, yep. <laughs> but also though, all those they said were our words for them. Like we call their planet Nibiru, the planet of crossing. That's not their word for their planet. And I'm really, Shane, I'm curious to know if you, know what these words mean. I don't know, but uh, they, their own word for Nibiru, I'm talking about, I guess you call them the Anunnakians, <laughs> uh, the Nib Nibiruans, I don't even know if that 
that's a word. But anyhow, their planet they call the Sa'am. And then the people of Sa'am are the Sa'amai. And Sa'amai translated into a Western language is just Sam, like Uncle Sam. And um, so when you're in the NSA, some of them call them the Nuna, but most of them call them the Sam. And uh, I just want to bring that up. And um, I'm just throwing out info to share um, because some of the stuff, I can't even say I I subscribe. I'm just giving information. And, yeah, uh, good, good. Um, that uh, there was more than Adam and Eve. There was seven, and that's the seven sisters, took the modified embryos into their own vessels to bring them to term and give birth to the first seven humans. And... Um, but uh, the whole reason is the picture, the Anunnaki and the Elohim, the Pleiadians, using their future sight, seeing that uh, no matter what happened, mankind didn't have enough time be before the end of this grand cycle to purge their shadow. And so uh, something needed to be done. And as the story goes that I was given by them is, yeah, first of all, mankind is a Pleiadian soul carrier without any modification or anything that the human vessel. And just because we were at an early state of evolution at that point and drinking from ditches and grazing on all fours, didn't mean we weren't going to become enlightened beings of self-awareness and higher consciousness somewhere in the future. But they seen that uh, this ending of this cycle, and they said it all has to do with the Earth's magnetic field acts as training wheels for human consciousness. And the stronger the magnetic field, the more there's a time lag between the thought and the manifestation of thought. So as the near the end of the cycle, the Earth's magnetic field gets weaker and weaker, which means your time lag between thought and manifestation of thought is getting smaller and smaller. If you get into the time at the end of the calendar, which we were just in, and you haven't weeded out that fear and doubt and nonsense out of your own belief system, you'll, it'll become manifest instantly. And it's not a good combo to enter that time if you haven't done your spiritual homework and started to weed out the negative thought forms out of your own belief system. So they said, what could we do, you know, to, um, to create this? First of all, they said, literally, well, they have to be kicked out of the garden uh, in Lil, because I, I knew in Lil personally in this plane, and um, we much brotherly love was flowing. But he said the children had to be taken to school, um, that, you know, most people were going to tell you we were created as slave labor i said it was more like pampered pets um and no one asked the question well how come this anunnaki anu you know the king of the world at that time had this concubine that was pleiadian well that was the mother you know what i mean if, if you knew this experiment was going to be happening to accelerate the consciousness of your children to make them more prepared for the end of the cycle by hopefully purging the mass consciousness is mass uh the mass consciousness of you know the shadow work that i'm sure she'd be very very interested in what was happening and they said that's why that union of anu and the pleiadian queen happened in the first place because the children were going to be made to experience their own mental energy in an accelerated fashion during from 27,000 years ago, which is the biblical deluge flood. Until now, we would be under this reflected holographic reality that's being broadcast from the moon, which is being created from our own mental energy. And um, it was, it was done. You know, we can get into you know, obviously, if you're going to do an experiment to accelerate human conscious evolution, you probably want to counsel to see how well your your uh, experiment is going. So they formed uh, seven lords of light, seven lords of darkness. And um, what I learned is the seven lords of darkness reflect back a negative polarity. They'll see, you know, in higher realms of consciousness, it's not 
you can't get there if you're giving your energy and your I am away to illusionary outside sources. So it's part of their counsel that to dangle dark carrots and see, you know, if they can get someone to bite, you know, like, well, see Yahweh, you know, and Lil. Um, they're not ready, you know, and truly they're not, you know, and uh, but then he told me, he said, Michael, this is all about self-inflicted suffering brought about through one's own free will. He said, none of these, I haven't told none of these people that they got to be participating in these blood sacrifice ceremonies, which was going on at this ancient ceremony I was brought into. I ended it, by the way, by telling them I wouldn't participate. And he said, we are so happy. You're the first that has not been tempted to chase that dark carrot um, down that pathway. And he told me then the whole veil dropped and he told me what I'm sharing with you now that this council, the Native American First Nations call them war chiefs and peace chiefs. And uh, this individual who was my brother in lieu, uh, he told me, Michael, I work with the seven lords of light and the seven lords of darkness. I'm the only one who sits in the middle and holds a seat on both sides. And I'm the only one who, uh, you know, is half light, half dark. And um, so he's been on Ancient Aliens many times. And um, I could share with you guys, uh, him talking to the producers, it's on, um, it's on YouTube. And they say, well, tell us what a chief is. And he said, well, all, every feather in this headdress has a story. But people don't know there's war chiefs and peace chiefs. And this is the only one that's both. And he's telling them exactly who he is. They just don't have the knowledge to understand what he's telling them. But what happened was after that meeting, um, I found out that the name Yahweh was known to the Cherokee and the Iroquois. I'm Iroquois, I'm Seneca. Um, Native American Indians long before the Bible. And um, this chief Yahweh was said to sit directly between these two councils of war and peace chiefs. And he's the only one who held a seat on both sides. And I'm like, wait a minute, this sounds exactly what, you know, this chief golden white eagle, by the way, he just dropped his robe. So he didn't mind me telling people anyhow. Uh, but anyhow, I, the next time I seen him, I said, listen, I know this is, sounds crazy, but spirits led me to understand you are Enlil, my brother, you know, Yahweh. And he said, yeah, I've done some pretty messed up things. That was his first words to me. Um, he said, but uh, no one knows who Enlil or Yahweh is anymore, anyhow, so I just go by chief. So um, the reason I'm sharing all of this with you is the council of light and dark that he's talking about. He said the dark are going to see if they can get you to give your energy and your I am away to illusionary outside sources by dangling dark carrots. And But the light is going to see, and what he said too about, it's all about suffering brought about through your own free will. They can't do anything unless you give them permission to accept that dark carrot thought form. He said the light is going to see what kind of love and compassion you bring to any suffering that comes your way. And he said, though, uh, at this festival, how I shut it down was um, I prayed for rain. And I did it not for any agenda. I did it because I see my friend suffering. That was, it's a Native American Sundance where, you know, there's piercing involved and flesh offerings. And, you know, but the thing is, they're out there dancing for four days straight. And um, it's a hundred degree weather. And I just, I felt so bad for them because I seen them just out there not being able to stop. And it's so hot. I was trying to find just shelter under a tree. Just to... So on the, on the end of the second night, I prayed for rain. It was just to bring them some relief from their suffering. And this, it came and pretty mind blowing actually. Um, but uh, it up until then too, man, there was a lot of like Illuminati funk energy there. You know, imagine what's going on and what type of energies are being drawn to that. Um, it was thick in the air. But after the rain came, man, it cleansed the atmosphere. It was, it felt instead of 100 degrees and it's in the desert, it felt like you're in Hawaii and it was 80 degrees and with a beautiful moisture hanging in there, you know. But um, they, uh, they said this whole cycle of 27,000 years every single incarnation, because, you know, all of us have been incarnating over and over again, 
This isn't our first rodeo, right? Um, and, uh, but the fact of the matter is he said, I, you know, I asked him, I said, is anyone, because he said, Michael, this one, because he could tell there's things going on there that really bothered me. He said, Michael, you're the most compassionate version of this. You know, there's, this ceremony is happening worldwide, but if you're in China, it's going to have nothing to do with a Native American Indian uh, gift wrapping. It'll be something different, but the same things are being tested. Um, uh, that up until now, no one has got by, past the council in this 27,000 years. And we all would go down the, he said, you know, this is the most compassionate level. There's six more going on that are con increased suffering, increased darkness. And like right now, no one doesn't make it. If we only have about 30 people dancing, he said, and there's not a lot of suffering. If someone falls down here and doesn't, they got someone that, out there to give you a drink of water and feather you down and cool you off. And, but if you were at a Sundance three, we got over 500 people dancing, a lot more suffering. And if you fall down there, there's no one to help you. You're probably going to just get stampeded. And um, if you go all the way to the end of that dark path, you're going to be asked, it's Abraham in the Bible, you know, kill your son, kill a dog, you know, make puppy soup. Um, and yeah, that, that, that's a great point. That was, that's the, that's the Elohim God was, that was the serpent doing it. <laughs> well, I, that's what I'm saying. It, it's actually the Aleph, that the alpha, that first letter in creation, the first building box says everything is a paradox. Creation is a paradox. They call it Hayoka. And it's backwards, you know, but <laughs> um, I don't know. You know, it's actually both sides because um, what you find out is there's an individual named Gal Zhu who, when Gal Zhu showed up, a new Enlil Aninki sat their asses down and paid attention. And um, Gal Zhu was said to be an ambassador of all that is. And it was actually Gal Zhu's friendship with Inky that, you know, during a sleep state, Gal Zhu showed up and gave him how to create the Ark. And, um, and uh, so, but Gal Zhu was behind the idea of accelerated intelligence for mankind. And it was Gal Zhu who truly pulled the multidimensional strings of light and dark. Again, if you need a dark lesson and you need to understand the folly of your own mental energy, Galzu can show you up close and personal and in the flesh, you know? But it doesn't, you don't, that's only if you choose it. Like Chief said, you know, it's all about self-inflicted suffering through your own free will. Once you enact your own cosmic free will, and you go, no, I don't, I don't accept that. And, you know, it's like Neo holding up his hand and the bullets fall, you know? Yeah. Um, that then they can't, they, they have no dominion over you once you enact your own I am and you step up into your energy. But, uh, you know, it's a lot of people, though, I think get back past the dark because sooner or later you just get sick of it. But what, how, what kind of love and compassion to any suffering that comes your way? You know, is building a wall showing love and compassion to suffering? I don't think it is. You know, uh, so what I'm saying is it's almost tougher to get past the team light, you know, to show your, uh, your heart's open and you have compassion for suffering that comes your way. Um, but what they told me is chief said, you know, one, go through the gate, you know, a cheat code, so to speak, is if you pray for rain. Because not only, he said there was Illuminati mind control, that they're, they're programmed, brainwashed, to never pray for rain. You want to be as hot as possible. You want to suffer. And so they're, it's in the mind control to never pray for rain. So if you pray for rain, first of all, you show that you don't succumb to mass consciousness mind control from the Illuminati. Um, but uh, not only have you not succumb to mind control, but you showed enough love and compassion for your fellow brother and sister to pray for rain. So he said, you know, congratulations. By the way, though, this all happened 
in June of 2016. And the end of the Mayan calendar is December 21st, 2016. Talking about taking it down to the wire. One of the grandmothers, you know, when I showed up to one of the Star Knowledge Conferences, which was in Mo, is releasing information to the public. She goes, oh, I see we got uh, Seneca blood here for the first time. She said, um, the, the bus arrived late, but still on time. <laughs> but um, so they told me that right then and there that um, the gig was up for them. It's kind of like King Solomon in the Bible went through the same vetting. And once he did not succumb to the dark, the dark had to do his bidding. If you remember the story, and he could will them to create King Solomon's temple. And um, it's the same that they said, you know, people that are under my umbrella, like the dark cannot operate in my reality for the Federal Reserve. I won't allow it. So a lot of people are under my umbrella when it comes to that, and they will reap the benefits they don't even have to do anything just sit back and watch it unfold but people's own uh, attachment cords you know if a guy has a problem with his girlfriend that's not under my umbrella you know you gotta work your own way through that but they said um you know from this point forward you would start to see signs that the dark have lost their power over this reality. Believe me, working with the NSA and stuff too, they know who I am. And uh, all of this is gonna culminate to the full totality eclipse in 2024. And this is insane, we gotta get into this. It's cool and you're gonna love this, Shane. There's, um, there's new mound builder artifacts over 30,000 of them that are found in these mound sites around the Great Lakes. And they've become, they've become known as the Michigan artifacts. People can Google that. But uh, I was gifted a flash drive by Zachariah Sitchin. And on it were these artifacts. I didn't know what they were at the time. It took me some diving down rabbit holes to figure that out. But uh, what had happened was at the last Star Knowledge Conference with Chief Golden Light Eagle, I walked out um, from being filmed for the Canadian Public Corporation, by the way, our teaching of star knowledge, which is what we've learned from communication with star beings for thousands of years, being Native American First Nations, is now being revealed to the world and is happening for, through the University of Ottawa, which is pretty huge, you know, and a show we filmed for the Canadian Public Corporation. And you can confirm this for yourself. Just type in Star Knowledge in University of Ottawa. You'll find the program. What's very interesting, though, is when you pull that up, look at the funding. It's from the United States government is funding in this Canadian program to reveal the uh, knowledge of Native American First Nations contact with star beings. It's a little weird to me. It's like someone knows, you know. But uh, so um, these... On the Zachariah Sitchin's flash drive, it's on there. And I get done with filming for the Canadian Public Corporation. And I walk into the main hall and Chief Golden Light Eagle has one of these artifacts up on the screen of his presentation. And I was like, what the hell? How, how does he have that? I only, I've got it from Zachariah Sitchin's assistant, you know? And um, so afterwards I walked up, I said, Chief, you know, I got that same artifact on this flash drive that was gifted to me from you know Zachariah Sitchin he goes yes Michael that stuff you talk about he, he was pretty cryptic you know and uh, he said people tell me I should read Zachariah Sitchin's books I said why would I it's about me <laughs> but anyhow um, these artifacts later I just brought Chief before he passed to East Lake to an unknown mound site that's huge. It's the Hall of Records that people don't know about. It takes over a mile to walk around it, and it's in East Lake, Ohio. I brought Chief and the Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull that I begin, began work with to bring it with uh, its current guardian, Bill Hammon, to uh, sacred sites. And so it was to unlock the hidden history of what's contained within that uh, that Hall of Records mound site. And so I had got an Airbnb, so we'd be all under the same roof. And um, first of all, Chief told them 
that uh, he knew he was dropping his robes. He was going to be leaving this plane. And people were like, oh, no, chief, don't say that. you you got a long time left here. He goes, no, you're not listening to me. I'm leaving. And I have named Michael as my successor. And uh, what I'm telling you is through all this and being vetted, I've gained Inky ship again. And because uh, Inky is not a name, it's a title, as you know, you know and his Lord Kai is Earth. Um, Ia is not a name, it's actually a title, and it means grandfather in ancient Native American First Nation language. They said, Your name has always been Michael. It's never been, you know, Native American Indians knew me as Moroni, they knew me as the peacemaker, they knew me as chief corn planter. Those are just titles. My name is Michael. I'm like, well, that's easy then, you know. But um, so uh, when I was there, I said, you know, he was going to talk to his most trusted psychic medicine woman. Her name's grandmother Chandra. And um, I asked him, did you talk to her? And he said, yes, I did. And she told me the reason you and I are being so obsessed and drawn into this uh, Michigan artifacts is it's because it's the story of you and him bringing the Nephilim bloodline from the uh, Mayan culture because out of Atlantis we went into the Mayan culture first and taught them you know pyramid building and you know the calendar and whatnot but one when this blood sacrifice stuff started setting in in that culture the ancients got the hell out of Dodge and they left there and came to Crystal River, Florida by all places. And it's weird because Crystal River, Florida, they do have a mound complex there, a Mayan complex, and it's known. People can look into the Crystal River archaeological site. It's uh, state ran. By the way, I've been there many times. And I'm walking out of the museum. There's a huge floor of Dali on the window. I'm like, why is no one asking what is this symbol doing at a Native American First Nation? Because the, the Flora de Lee, the Sangreal, the Holy Grail bloodline, the Anunnaki human hybrid bloodline on this planet intermingled into the Native American Indian First Nations. They're not the skull and bones. They're not, you know, people want to put the Nephilim and the Anunnaki into this proverbial throw them under the bus, you know, that they're the ones in control of all the world's problems and evil machinery. When the Native American First Nations, it's the worst genocide that's ever happened on this planet, up to 100 million, some people say. And uh, what does that have to do with Illuminati European secret societies? Nothing. That's what it has to do with it. And um, so that's what I'm here to do, to do, too, because, you know, obviously, if there is one of them who was at the apex of that pyramid of reflecting back to the negative polarity it's Marduk um, but he's just doing a spiritual job to reflect back a negative polarity to make us evolve I can guarantee you if you came before a multi-dimensional being whose spiritual job was to make you experience your own mental energy and you're filled with a lot of fear and doubt and garbage man it's not going to end well you're going to experience you're going to go demon, you know, because it, that that being is making you experience your baggage and hopes you'll change it, you know. But uh, so these artifacts, I've taken a deep dive now. Um, and uh, it's part of what's coming up for humanity is a whole new piece of the puzzle. And these artifacts, actually, I was blown away because it tells the story of the Sundance I went to in detail about time links and people that are involved uh but um it also says that the elohim will reveal themselves at a time that day becomes night and the morning star i think sarah's <laughs> um in a time that the morning star is uh, uh, visible in the night sky and day becomes night and there's an eclipse well i looked the 24th I mean, 2024 full totality eclipse that's coming up. Uh, and it goes right over that Hall of Records mound site, by the way, in East Lake. So that's very cool. I can guarantee you I will be there. But uh, 
Michael, it's, Michael, can I just inter, um, chime in for a second? Sure. Have you, have you ever heard of uh, being named, or have you ever heard the names Azula and Ishtin? Uh, the first one, I Azula. No, I'm thinking of Ghostbusters. <laughs> no. Azula and Ishtin, well, Jesus and Mary Magdalene, their names are Ishtin and Azula. Azula, mm -hmm. uh, and... Um, so, yeah, the reason I'm bringing this up, because if we understand or we appreciate that the, um, I know I, this is kind of in a different direction than what you were talking about, but my mind's going, you know, a lot of things are going through my mind as I listen to you. And I think about five or six, I think this is the fifth or sixth time that we're, this planet has been seeded. Uh, we redid this over and over and over again, because evidently we weren't learning our lesson of uh, developing spiritually as opposed to like the Atlanta, Atlantis, Lemurian, Atlantis uh, wars and so forth of choosing technology over our spiritual development and gifts, which is the greatest technology out here. We already, we are that. Yeah. Um, and I say that to people often. Um, but I know that, um, so there's different timelines or different seedings of these families coming back and re uh reincarnating back into these same bloodlines and living yeah. their lives out and so forth uh but Shane did you want to respond to anything that Michael was sharing I mean I know the 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 crystal skull is a huge topic of discussion right now I, and I, yeah oh, sorry go ahead Please. no I, 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 I want to share something with you guys just yeah because this is uh really cool um you no know, uh what you you what michael discusses what you discuss i i just i'm i'm all ears i listen and um it's beautiful i i I'll, i want to show you something uh here i think we all have uh but michael you know you asked me a question why you're doing that real quick shane because it it was kind of heavy on my heart when you said are you her i think my oversoul is the is the pleiadian mother is ida Understood. But I also I also know that um, the daughter, the first female that you and your sister brought, uh, created the female vessel. Um, there's pictures of her with her little pigtail sitting on the father's lap. I don't know what picture it's the Anunnaki. I know you've seen it. I've seen it. It's it's a common one, but evidently there's a book, and I don't know if it was Zachary Stitch or another book and I thought I had it here. I was hoping to find it before our show, but um, evidently the grandfather took interest of the granddaughter. And I'm wondering if that was Ishtin, which was the first, the female, because you know, by the way, my name Ida is in the word Pleiadian backwards. And A is the first letter of the alphabet, which you were talking about. Yeah, you have, you you have the olive on both sides, Ida. That's right, A I D A, but the A is silent, like and you have spoken silence. The I is the I is uh, is Yod, which is Virgo, and then the D is Dalit, the planet Venus, the doorway. Interesting. I, mean, I don't you know. Think real quick say about much the... clearer than that. Thank you, Shane. <laughs> that is freaking amazing. Well, and yeah, it, the it, whole uh, thing. I've been Ida wondering who, uh, who the mother is. So it's nice to finally meet you and get that out into the yeah. open. Because it's not there's not a lot of info on that relationship between Anu and uh, you. Um, it's hard to find. I, I've been looking, and I because that's got to be an interesting story, right? Well, um, I, I can tell you this, and I know this for a fact, and I actually have a picture of of him and I, and I won't share that right now because it's just. I trust that if it's meant to be shared, it will be. And it's all of our story. Nobody. You're talking about a new? I'm talking about Jesus, Azula, oh. who mm. is the head of the Dracos, who is on this planet, who I went and met personally and looked him straight in the eye. Uh, he knew exactly who I was. Although I asked him, do you remember who I am? And he kept looking at me. I knew he knew. I think it was an uncomfortable situation. And I said, you and I have spoke a few times. And he said, oh, Ida, it's been a long time. Mm. And I could 
feel the energy from him as if like we're talking hundreds of thousands of years. Because I was told that there was a 300,000 year old Draco reptilian that said he'll never let me go until, and I never got to hear after when it when the word until, uh, until I didn't get to hear the, the finish uh, statement, which mm. of course has really gotten me for a long time. But um, I was, I, 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 it, I was caused to face my own darkness, Michael. I wasn't prepared for what I was going through. I was, I was uh, manifesting out of uh, just out of my thought and uh, things were happening pretty rapidly, but I will say this and then Shane, I'm, I apologize. I know you wanted to share. Oh, you don't, no, 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 don't apologize. I'm all here. Um, listening. But I heard when I had my awakening and I was woke up at four o'clock in the morning and told to go outside, I had a uh, uh, instant Kundalini activation, spontaneous Kundalini activation. I didn't expect what was happening. And I was told that they're killing and raping my children. As clear as I am speaking to you right now. And that put me into a tailspin of many things. Uh, it was very painful. Um, and I had to, you know, I had to, I felt what I did. You know, I didn't understand what was going on, but I felt I handled it the best I could with the knowledge at the time that I knew. But the blessing uh-huh. is, is that I was able to learn from all that. And my life is completely turned around now. And I'm thankful. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's not for the meek, is it? As, no, you know, oh, no, I, I, I wouldn't wish anybody to go through what I experienced and what I, what I see. So Understood. But, yep. Shane, please. And thank you for your patience with Michael and I, because I know we Oh, both. no, no. Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. this is a discussion. Yeah. When there's three yeah. people, you, you this is how it works. Um, so here's the standard um, model of particle physics or particles and forces, basically at the quantum level that makes up matter. Um, you basically have 12 um, six quarks, types of quarks that produce matter or work inside the nucleus, um, six types of ele- electron, basically. So six that go t- to the proton, if you will, six that go to the electron, four force carriers, right? Earth, air, water, fire. And then the 17th particle, the Higgs boson particle, the God particle was discovered on July 4th, uh, 2012. And that's the 17th particle. So back to 17 and Aquarius and the star. Well, before this presentation, I was looking at, uh, and did I just lose it? I don't know. Hold on here. Well, I'll have to go back and get it. Okay. Just had it. Where did it go? Bear with me. Ah, here it is. Oh, you're fine. Yeah, no worries. I had. I, I would love to do a, a part two okay. of this, by the way, because there's so much. Go ahead. So, this is either the Hyades star cluster or the V part of the Bull constellation, or this is the Pleiades, one of the two. Um, but what's interesting is you count these, these are 16 that go around the center. So the Higgs boson is the 17th particle. And that basically is what gives mass and is like the glue of all matter and all in, in the universe, so to speak, or in the creation or in the hologram. What's crazy is that there's 16 of these that go around and then the 17th would be here. And there's also 17 that go around here. So in my opinion, this is an ancient depiction of the strategy, the the um, the strategic uh, building blocks in which and how the hologram was created and made manifest. And when I call when I say the hologram, I'm talking about the universe. And uh, again, the Higgs boson was um, discovered on July fourth, uh, two thousand twelve. 
So I think for the, in that way, 2012 was a very um, monumental year uh, for sure for humanity. And, uh, you know, as you can see, there's some strange looking beings, huge hands, um, large eyes. I don't know, can't even see this one, but I thought that was very interesting. So I want to share well, that. The difference in the size of these two, clearly, I mean, well, yeah. And then the spaceship here with the people, you know, at the top but there. Yeah, I mean, is, clear oh, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's not it. So this is the Kabbalistic tree of life in three dimensions, which is the eight-point star, just elongated. So in two dimensions, you could see it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's because they stretched it. But if you put this out, this would be a two-dimensional eight-point star. But in three dimensions, here you go. Now, this... Um, the Kabbalistic tree of life, the eight point star was cr first created two, 3000 years ago. And obviously quantum, you know, the whole discovery of quantum physics and mapping out the particles that are in it have has all happened in the last 50 to 60 years. So the fact that you have 16 base particles and then the 17th being the Higgs boson, this would be dot or the, or the tree of knowledge basically right here um it's called the hidden sphere um but it's just incredible and again back to that sumerian depiction that i was just showing that sumerian cylinder seal um the fact that that thing has 16 going around it and the 17th in the center that's this again and this is the this is the strategy the building block the language in which space akasha was encoded and um uh form the, the form that happens or the form that evolves is from the encoding so i just want to share that very cool it's incredible yeah it, it is it's incredible. incredible yeah well, there's um a lot was shared this evening i'm so thankful i could i could listen to both of you for hours and hours and continue this um, discussion. And I'm hoping that, you know, we could come back and maybe next time really get into more of a, you know, focus on, again, the seating where, you know, we're talking about Octarians, Lemurians, Pleiadians, Adromedans, all the different, you know, those are the common ones we hear of. But from my understanding, there's, you know, hundreds of thousands of different beings in life. Uh, Forms what I'd like there. to share about that is um, in these Michigan artifacts, it says, you know, when day becomes night during this eclipse and the morning star is in the sky, which Venus will be, um, that from one end of the night sky of heaven to the other will be filled with the chariots of fire and the Elohim. And um, it won't be debatable, obviously, you know, just like the last full totality eclipse that all everyone's going to be eyes to the sky and cameras ready and news and from what they're saying when day becomes night there's going to be things visible in the night sky that it will be the grand reveal um but i do want to say is about meeting the nephilim through the native american first nation i know people are like well sure well prove it right um I, I just want to share one experience I had um, with the grandmother that was right around in the, you know, um, Chief Golden White Eagle. Um, she pulled up at the Sundance and said, well, you go for a ride with me in her minivan. I actually thought I was in trouble because I was smoking weed. <laughs> I heard they frown on it. So I'm like, I'm a grown man going, oh shit, I'm in trouble. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I got in her minivan with her and she said, Michael, I want to talk to you about the migration route of our uh, bloodline as it entered the North American continent. She said, wouldn't it be nice, though, if I had a map of the United States to show you on? And she went like this over the, the inside of her minivan window and a map of the United States appeared out of nowhere. It looked like a computer holographic Star Wars 
computer, you know, uh, map of the United States. And it was all red, I remember. And it filled up the whole space between her and the windshield was this map. And uh, she looked at me and she said, I know you can see it. Yep, it's right there, you know. And uh, she proceeded to use that map for about the last, the next 15, 20 minutes to show me how the bloodline entered, you know, the left of Florida, and then eventually came out the left-hand side of the top of Florida, went through the interior of the North American continent, becoming known as the Mound Builders, and then set up camp pretty much around the Great Lakes, um, both Canada side and our side. Um, so I just want to share this that, you know, I know it sounds crazy to say, well, I've met these beings, but they've proven to me they're they're not normal humans. I've never, I, matter of fact, I talked to her for about four hours, uh, not that long ago. And I said, I just, grandmother, I want you to know, I'm aware that you made a map of the United States appear out of nowhere. I'm not even going to ask you how you did it because I probably wouldn't understand anyhow. But I just want you to know I'm aware, you know? Um, so those are uh, pretty much it. Things that I want to just, wrap up the loose ends 2024 right i'm excited yeah i'm excited yeah. for life i'm excited i'm coming together with more and more of my soul family you know i think we're all soul family but those that i'm more um connected to on a on a um deeper level and yeah Jane, do you have any stories mm -hmm. that you wanted to share with us i mean michael and i have definitely taken some time up to share ours i'd like to hear you know is, are there any stories that have you been awakened to who, you know, because I think that's part of our, um, the awakening stage is your DNA being activated and people becoming aware of who they are at a soul level and who they're connected to and the stories behind it. We well, are the storytellers of, you know. Sure. How, I, yeah. Well, I have a, just, it's a, a very com a completely different um, way of perceiving uh, creation, reality and everything. And so, I don't know if it necessarily fits. That's why I, I'm just kind of showing you guys some, you know, some diagrams and kind of, you know, some tidbits here and there. Oh no, I think your um, work is amazing. So, but no, no, I just, yeah. Uh, Who are you? Well, that's another thing. Is uh, <laughs> I when we do when we think about identity. Um, much like we do, we would do a fingerprint, right? Like, you know, this person's this person, we know because their fingerprint. And um, we definitely have an Akashic fingerprint, which you have to know how, you know, we've talked about it, you, you have to know how to decode the building blocks of space or the Akasha, which is, there's a, there's a formula to it, you know? So obviously I know the formula. So what is Nakash? Well, again, the noon, the N, that's Scorpio Fucus. Um, the, the het in the middle is like an H sound, maybe with a little bit of a k, like a H with a C in it, chet or het is cancer. And then the sh, the sh, SH, um, shin, which is fire. So Nakash in the Akashic, um, uh, alphabet is, um, cancer in the middle. Scorpio on one side, fire on the other. That being said, so um, my son is was in the Cancer constellation when I was born, and I'm not talking Western astrology, obviously. I'm talking, I'm talking astronomy. Um, my moon was in Scorpio, and my ascendant sign and uh, midheaven are both fire signs. So in that way, I. Um, would say that I fit the bill for Nakash, but there's one more thing that would be needed. Again, you would have to be, um, it's the num the numerics, right? And um, the, the numerics we talked about a little bit last time, uh, 728 obviously um, references Genesis 1-1 and because it's seven words, 28 letters. So in that way, I would say now, but who in their right mind would say, I, I embody Nakash, the Nakash, because the Nakash is the bad, you know, I 
if this, if it was 200 years ago, they would hang me. They would burn me alive. Mm. Yeah, it's it's real serious. Like it's not like I don't. I'm not educated enough. I don't. I don't know enough about that. You're correct. saying that you're the, the Nakash is the serpent, and okay. Christianity, Catholicism, the serpent is Satan. <laughs> well, Satan is just uh, say, from but my, I mean, again, from my, yeah. again. This is. Um, I think people have. Firstly, they um, they don't understand the serpent and what you know. The, I think we have a the nakash as a verb means shining one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, but also I think that um, again we um, this thing about the serpent being evil, the reptilians and all that. Um, you know, I, I would, I have some private um, um, uh, some private memories of, of being, being on board with these beings of, of, of their ships. And I would just say that um, they're, they're very loving and they're very kind. And uh, it's just like the Sumerian depictions. They're not, they don't, it's not like the alien greys or anything. That not these that they they have like, I don't know if they're horns or if it's a helmet or what it is, but they're go, it's going like this. And uh, some of them might have like also these helmet like thing, this cone like structure going up. But um they they were beautiful, and nice. But again, um I I'm going by more of uh there, my ability to break down the Akashic building blocks and also kind of an inner sense that I've always had and kind of putting everything together and realizing, um, hey, this is at least the template that you embody. It might not be that I am the original Nakash because I have a feeling that Nakash is a, it's a group, a tree with many leaves, right? But that definitely I'm a segment of that because also what the serpent or Nakash represents is, is um, uh, the, the one or the group of beings that basically um, revolted. You know, it's the whole story of Enki and en Enlil was that Enki was upset because Enlil was gonna flood the earth. And Enki says, no, 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 no. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna save them. And also like Prometheus in Greek mythology is the Enki, the one that brings the fire to humanity, the knowledge, the secret knowledge, the forbidden knowledge. What's the forbidden knowledge? What's the secret knowledge? It's, it's the knowledge of Moshe, Moses. It's the, the not what comes after Genesis, the Exodus, how to free yourself from the matrix, how to, how to be liberated, how to liberate consciousness. So it's a paradox, right? That's why the first book is Genesis. The last book is Revelation. The whole thing is. I can tell Revelation. you something about you know exactly what you're talking about is um, for the Native American First Nations, every tribe has what they call the Serpent Clan, and um, at the Serpent Mound events, um, Grandmother Terry Rivera is um, the Serpent Mound grandmother. She's does all the events there. And so I'm on stage performing. And when I get done, um, she stops me from leaving the stage. And she said, I want to announce that Michael is an identified member of the Serpent Clan now. And I'm thinking, all right, you know, she, she went on to do, she sang that it was supposed to clear all my chakras and whatnot. But I didn't know what the Serpent Clan was or had no clue. About five months later, I was at my next Star Knowledge Conference. So I asked Chief Golden Light Eagle in low. I'm like, by the way, you know, Grandmother Terry, I said, I'm a member of the Serpent Clan. And I said, what is the Serpent Clan? And he said, those of us with galactic heritage. So beautiful. I just wanted to share that it was just. Yeah, beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So who, that, um, who would you guys say is who is Jesus? Well, I can tell you, I'm, I at the Sundance, he they told me his name is Yeshua, and he was there, and um, he's a, a super dear friend of mine. But uh, that's a deep story. Um, 
I don't, I, I, it's my understanding that Yeshua and Jesus are two different beings. Um, mm. Well, and Jesus claims to be Lucifer at the end of the Bible. Uh, so that's a little, I, you know, I can just tell you, I know for myself that Inky is Lucifer. Um, <laughs> it's, I, well, I mean, I'm, I'm just, well, I know. Okay. So just from my own awareness and what I've uh, received and, the contact that I I had and so forth and the people that showed up in my life during that time um, one of these people is on the planet it is who I believe well I mean it's Azula for sure now if he's known to be Jesus then that's you know I've heard I, that I, every I, one I, of these intelligences has 12 pineal glands and they have 12 incarnations going at any time Okay. Uh, uh, simultaneously. So it's, there's just not one Marduk here. Um, but it's interesting for Inky because no one really knows what happened to Inky after he was Pata in uh, Egypt. Well, it's because I disappeared after disobeying the council and saving mankind. I started in incarnating into the human bloodline, into the Native American Indian culture. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, what I can tell you is what I have heard is every one of them have 12 incarnations going simultaneously, except for Inky, because when Inky left the council, the only way that they would know the real Inky is he'd have a very specific bloodline, and that was both sides uh, of the blood being within one person, because, you know, being, having the blood of team good cop and bad cop, first of all, Throughout history, that'd be very rare of happening because there are enemies. It's kind of like uh, God, that fable story of the man and woman, different. My brain's shutting down. But, um, uh, you know, I can tell you the one that I met, and this is just the Native American First Nation outlook on it of him being Yeshua. I can tell you that they they say Archangel Michael and Lucifer are one and the same. That it depends on whether I've taken a light seat or a dark seat. And to them, I think that that's not even correct because the Vatican has a really good way of flipping the script. You know, for a long time they said Mary Magdalene was a prostitute and a whore. Now the the Pope came forth and guess what? We found out she's the Apostle of Apostles. You know. I think um, what she did was she activated a lot of men into their awakening is what she did. And she was looked at as a prostitute for that. And she's also the one that was sacrificed. It wasn't Jesus. That's what, but, that is exactly what Chief told me. You know, he said, I know that to be a fact because I remember every bit of what he, I experienced. He told me it was his sister. Um, yeah. I, I'm not saying I even, this is, I'm I, I don't know, info. but I'm, I, I have full memory recollection like yesterday i can see it all and it was not a um it was a horrid experience i'll just say that hmm. so, cashier uh, a little choked up because it's it's it, i don't think um that human i don't think people understand um the depths of trauma that the divine feminine i'm not saying that you know what they told me about that because it's absolutely you know they it was on purpose to remove the feminine from the mass consciousness because team bad cop even though they're going down that path what would be the most benefit to mankind down that dark path and it was that we, we would evolve technologically now they know we need, we need the spiritual feminine aspect to balance that. But if we could evolve as quickly as possible. So if you look at the brain as being feminine and male or engineering and well, to remove the feminine aspect from the cultural story, then would take the whole mass consciousness as technological as possible and scientific. And um, so that's one of the things they said is once the council vetting passed in the halls of Amenti, that to start to look into um, the feminine returning in a big way to the mass consciousness would be a sign that the dark had not lost their power because that was part of their 
game plan was to remove the feminine aspect so we would evolve. That was the best positive light outcome from a dark path. Yeah, but I, I would also add that, you know, the removal of the feminine is, is really a religious thing more than anything. I and mean, if you think about it, so. Yeah, they removed it out of the, you know, they turned Mary Magdalene into a prostitute and a whore. But again, I, I, right, we always, when we, when we think of Christianity, when we think of Catholicism, we usually think of like this sector or sect of people that believes in this all loving good deity, God. And it's very strange um, behavior that, that comes from these institutions. And you bring up one important one and that was the removal of the feminine, you know? I want, I want to share something with you too. So, you know, nothing is a mistake. And in fact, you know, the, when we talk about the Akasha, right? The encoding of space. Why do you, why do you think um, you chose 322, Ida? I don't know, but I know it's, I thought about it when I. I'm gonna, let's yeah. read, let's go, let's go to three, 322 Genesis. You can see the screen, right? Yes. And the Lord God, or the and the Elohim said, "Behold, the man Adam has become one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put put forth his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever." And that's exactly why this organization was created and has three twenty two on. And just a little clue of, um, again, of what we were talking about, you know, the Aleph said right in the beginning, the first building block of creation, that um, that the revelation would provide the realization of the paradox. And this has been one heck of a paradox. And Michael, thank you so much for bringing up the, the Native American people and the, the indigenous people of this whole planet, because they are the serpent. So when you yeah. want to talk about the serpent and the Elohim and what happened, you can see it, it played out on planet Earth. You know what I can share something with you is they said Inky's bloodline on this planet is known as the serpent clan or uh, the stag clan, which the deer and why it's so prominent in spirituality. But uh, the serpent. Guys, excuse being... me just for a minute. I'll be right mm -hmm. Right on. Um, the Serpent Clan, being, you know, the Inky bloodline here, the Enlil's bloodline is uh, the Eagle, you know, the Eagle Nation. And um, so if a member of the Serpent Clan has been vetted by the Eagle Nation, they become the Plume Serpent, right? Feathered mm. Serpent. That's uh, a Yes. It's, it's more of a designation. They call it the Rainbow to them is not rainbow like the sky colors. It's the colors of the chakras, they told me, that red in the root to purple in the crown. And the grandmother said, to those of us that have the gift of sight, you've become the whirling rainbow. And I like this, uh, this idea because guess what, man? We can all become rainbow. We can all you know, clean our chakra centers. Each one of us is gonna have a different journey. And, you know, and some of us might need work in one area and another and, but we can all become rainbow. And um, mm -hmm. for me, you know, to be deemed my, the name they gave me was Rainbow Warrior Eagle. And that's why they explained the rainbow part of it, that it truly means clean chakras. You find out that the Tibetan monks had the same knowledge, they call it the rainbow body. And, um, and uh, so Chief Blue Star Eagle said, now that you've been gifted your spiritual name that said you know spirit doesn't know you as michael they know you as rainbow warrior so when you pray under this name your prayers will go to creator with great enthusiasm said until you're deemed rainbow uh let's just say you had six of your seven chakras all clean and balanced and shiny but your root chakra is dark you're still having problems with your keeping a roof over your head and abundance and whatnot. Um, all of a sudden, if you're granted extra manifestation ability, you're probably just going to go to what chakra you still have 
homework to do and manifest the heck out of the worst case scenario. And they told me, well, spirit's smarter than that. No one is granted extra manifestation ability until you've proven yourself to spirit to be rainbow or uh, eagle status as well as another way of communicating that. To them, the eagle is the only bird that flies above the storm and doesn't seek shelter below it and gets the, you know, the bird's eye. So I just wanted to share those things, you know, with it. And as far as titles too, like you're saying, you know, so don't, first of all, when these titles start coming, don't go into a guru ship mentality. Because oh, great. Totally. They said, uh, you know, the acorn's no less significant than the giant oak it will one day become in creator's eyes that we all go through these cycles of evolution. So don't get lost in hierarchy and whatnot. Um, but they said, we've all lived so many lives and had so many names that names really become useless that what you are, they told me, is truly nameless, but not voiceless. You know, it's the same intelligence coming through through many lifetimes to facilitate uh, a directive. You know, it's kind of what that movie, uh, Star Atlas, I think was the name of it. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, where there's multiple timelines of the same people incarnating over and over again. But sure. uh, yeah, man, it's been fascinating. I'm really glad that we got to meet. And thank you, Ada, for uh, facilitating this. And uh, yeah, let's Ida, do it it's Ida, Michael. Yeah, I keep saying Ida. 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 Ah, well, yeah. I, yeah. Ida. Why do yeah, I keep saying Ida? Ida? The Ida is the divine feminine that goes up. up yep. Uh, your, I, uh, I'll have it. My my father's my name was Isa. My mother's name was Harriet. Harriet means mother. I was born in the state of Maryland. I'm the youngest of 12 kids. And the divine feminine is 8-7. Divine masculine is 9-7 from a reptilian perspective. Mm. So, uh, and I can keep going on and on and on, but the good news is, is that all of us got together and we're here right now. And I'm, I don't really want to attach to any, I don't think I'm special in any way. I know that I hold a lot yeah. of love, a lot of love in my heart and I want good things for everybody. I, I really look forward to um, coming together, all of humankind to the best of, you know, I don't know how that's going to play out. Right. Cause Me I know either. Shane, I, yeah, Shane, <laughs> You, you have such a loving, kind stance, and I see you, and I thank you. I want you to know that. You know, yeah, yeah, really, let's, yeah. Let's, re, yeah, this is all, um, well, it, yes, it is all about love, and it is all about coming together, and right, the Inca, the Inca and the Nazca have that, the most famous, they make, they made it a constellation. It's when you look at the, the center of our galaxy, it's called the cosmic rift or the great rift, literally. That is on one set, on one side is the shepherd, on the other side is the serpent. That's the cosmic rift of this universe. It has to be healed. This isn't about one's good and one's evil. Both have a part to play. Both have to come together. It's about bringing the two back into the one. Remember at the Aleph, it was, that's the, the division that happened, the split. When the light was divided from the darkness, the darkness is transparency. That's why the, the pupil of our eye is, is black. That's why 97% of the universe is black. It allows the light, it allows matter, it, it allows the electron to move as a wave so that all possibilities will happen. Mm. And so this isn't, this is no longer a story about good and evil. See, that's the story that the 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 creator god when we think about catholicism or the the book of genesis and in kind of religion as we we know it today that's the story that they want to perpetuate that there's good and that there's evil and it, you're you're a good one you're going to go to heaven because you're affiliated with them or you're a part of their group and if you're not and you're anything else, you're evil and you're bad and you're demised and you're dismissed. It's, we all count and, we're, and everything has to be brought back into the one. The last letter of the whole plan is Saturn. It's the top, it's the cross. If you look at the astrological, astrological symbol of Saturn, it's a serpent on a cross. That's... Mm. 
at the <laughs> junks of all of this, the realization that, oh my God, it was never as we were taught. The indigenous people are, what be, they were, remember, they were already here when the so-called Garden of Eden was created. Yeah. Well, that's, that's interesting. You say that, right? Yeah, because that's, that's why maybe I wasn't, uh, I was trying to figure out how to articulate what I was trying to say. But so if there's been many seedings or many different timelines or, or discs of existence, well, how many times um, we've done this and keep playing out this same storyline, never to evolve because we keep playing the game of good and evil. And we're not coming and, together. Yeah. But also, Ida, maybe we're this, this also playing the game of reincarnation. The whole well, process, well, the whole too, thing yeah. is maybe is is actually letting go of all of these old spiritual teachings. Maybe, just maybe, if we think about it, what the, the teaching of the Christ was all about, right, was liberation through redemption. What was the redemption? Forgiveness and love for all beings. But when we talk about resurrection, we're not talking about being born again into an old world or a world that's always existed. We're talking about a virgin birth into a sector, a realm, a phase of creation that has never been experienced before, ever. That's what the Elohim, that's what they don't want humanity to come across. They want us to keep going around and around like the hamster on the, on the hamster wheel, around and around and around and around. But there's something beyond if we let go of everything, um, you know, as far as reincarnation, um, you know, the, the, the darkness versus the light, the good versus evil. Now, is there tragedy that happens in this universe, in this plane of existence, in this hologram? Absolutely, there is. But if we, if we hold on to it and recognize it with a, with a microscope or a telescope and zoom in on it, we can never break free of its residual effects. The only way we can break free is bringing all things back into one together and releasing like Aquarius. The, the, we don't we have didn't even get to get into that about yeah, the, the soul is that. in formation. And yeah. at the completion of the formation of the soul, it becomes an empty void vessel. That's why Aquarius pours everything out. And that's the Water. beauty. Because then you, then again, the electron or the photon becomes a wave function again, instead of being a particle. And then all things can happen all at once. Oh my gosh, that is super amazing. <laughs> wow, Shane. That was lovely. It. That's freaking yeah. awesome. Thank well, you so I, much for sharing your wisdom and knowledge with us. Yeah, likewise, Michael. And I'm hoping that we can, uh, so we can get back on again sometime. I would love that. I mean, I'll ask you both right now. I mean, we could plan for something maybe at the uh, in mid April if you guys are available. I mean, I don't want to push it too far out. Um, yeah, find out when what's good for Michael, and then just let me know. No, that'll work. Mid April, yeah, we can, we can yeah. do that. And because I don't, yeah, that would be lovely. I, I, guys, I thank you I, so I, much. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Go ahead. What were you gonna say? Shane? I just say I love I love you too. I love uh, you know I love the I fact love you that too, Shane. you two are expressing um, you know your truth and your um, spiritual um, uh, prognosis with humanity and with me and and thank you so much. So that's why I say when I I'm offering a different view of reality, but that's not to dismiss other people's views. I still have, have high respect and, you know, um, it's not about who's right or who's wrong. It's just about entertaining new ideas. And um, yeah, right. so I just hope- Yeah, you know. of course, we, there's different um, perspectives and I respect both of you. I mean, I appreciate- Yeah, yeah. You know, hearing- I think others. that's yeah. what adulting is, you know, when you can- Yeah, there you are. Even if that's you, right. uh, you know, if you disagree, if you can shake hands at the end of it and say, well, thank you for sharing your thoughts and feelings with me, you know, yeah. and, um, and keep an open mind because man, none of us know it all. I don't think, exactly. you know. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 
you know, I was one of the, you know, when I first woke up real quick, I'll just tell you this. When I first woke up and I start becoming aware of, you know, the cosmic uh, wars and, you know, the reptilians and the Pleiadians being in battle for God knows how long, you know, people were talking about, I mean, there were shows after shows watching different um, super soldier. I know that I was using my lab. I know that I have AI that runs through my body, although I do contain a soul. I know that for sure. I can see the wiring in my eyes. So in this on the right side. Uh, and Michael had mentioned about Pleiadian souls. So our souls, I'll say, I can only speak from what I understand, um, that the soul of a Pleiadian, the power, we would not be able to, um, a, human, a normal human vessel would not be able to contain the soul of, of a Pleiadian. It would, you would mention this about it combusting. So yeah. AI was introduced as a uh, way of being able to create a um, uh, avatar body in order for us to incarnate into, in yeah. order for us to be here. And, and have the increase here. of the creatine kinase, because that brings the extra chi and prana. That's like a little bigger pool of uh, chi for the incarnating Pleiadian soul because like you said what they found was you know the yellow the pleiadian elders said you know we're not going to grant this experiment to accelerate human conscious evolution by making them experience their own mental energy in an accelerated fashion unless you go and walk a mile in their moccasins because this has never been tried before so obviously inky had already went against <laughs> the anunnaki to you know to try to help and so, of course, he's like, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll incarnate right into the human bloodline to try to steer the experiment from behind enemy lines, you know? And when we did, we just would spontaneously combust. The, the human vessel was not capable of the energetic incoming Pleiadian signature. And so, yeah, um, that some definite things had to be done to create... Uh, a human offshoot vessel. But I did say like here that even with the creatine kinase and whatnot to represent mankind before the council, you can't come at any higher frequency than the highest cellular capacitance that the human is capable of. Um, and that's about two volts per cell. And even without the tweaking, a human can get there you know, keeping like if you're a really fit athlete, you can get up to about two volts per cell. But I like to say then the bloodline allows us to be fat and drink beer and get to that level. <laughs> but it's it's no, you know, it's not not human. It's just, you know, they said most humans are about 0. 0.2, uh, uh, you know, volts of electricity at a cellular level. Um, me personally, I'm on about 1.6. So, um, yeah, it's nothing to be like, oh, I'm, I'm this or that. No, man, this is all about we're all special. You know, if you're in human form, it doesn't matter whether you're homeless and shit's not working for you. You're still a divine being having a physical experience. Absolutely. And I say yeah. to people often, as long as I can, you know, if we can see each other, our divinity, regardless of what the, this meat suit or avatar or whatever you want to call this. Uh, thing that we inhabit, right? Meat suits good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I call it avatar meat suit. I don't know where I've heard these oh. words before, but um, I always see the divine in everyone, and uh, I appreciate and love. I want good things for everyone. I want success for everybody. I celebrate my friends. I celebrate you both. I'm super, super thankful yeah. right now. Um, I'm a little choked up. I mean, this has been a um, a real eye opener. You know, I've had some some things come into my awareness during the show that's um, got me a little, you know, in my feelings, not in a bad way, like of joy, of love. I mean, I'm so thankful. I just feel a great deal of gratitude right now. Oh, me too. And, likewise towards you too. Yeah. Likewise to you, Ida. Likewise to you, Michael. Yeah. yeah, it seems like uh, we're getting the band back together. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I love it. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, don't ask me to sing because I I'll <laughs> we'll be broken up again if I do that. No, I'm just kidding. Guys, thank you so much for coming on. I will be in contact. We'll work out another date, hopefully the mid of April, if you both are in agreement. Uh, and we'll pick up and continue our discussion and share our stories and you know, hopes that we'll we'll be able to reach the many hearts. Whoever I I always believe uh, that whoever watches this show, the ones that it's supposed to reach, will it will reach. Can I can I share something with you guys before we Please do. go? So I start writing a book in 2012 called Little Sisters Lost Souls. Okay, and that's when the targeting got real bad. But I was being abducted and returned, and I was reciting these words out of my um, mouth. I would wake up reciting them. So I know that it was a message that I was to share. And it's the introduction of my book. And I have over 200 book pages. I haven't completed it. But I want to share it with you because I think that it may touch the hearts of both you and those that will listen. So it goes like this. I've always known that I've been blessed with a spiritual eye. I say that with every bit of humility I'm humanly capable of. The challenge always is, is removing my ego and feminine wiles. As I've just recently discovered, I've denied everything I was because everything I was was human. And I didn't like what thoughts were created through my mind of flesh. I know my true self, that is the spirit of God that dwells and lives within me. I am in love with me. When I pray and practice meditation, I'm at my best to stay spirit spiritually conditioned for a higher learning, which only the God of my understanding can teach me in this beautiful gift of life and fill my spirit with the spirit of love and truth. When I stay in the spirit of God, not of the flesh, I do his will, not mine, because my will is his, higher learning. I was trapped and, I was trapped and consumed by the insanity of my mind, jailed from the freedom to have peace in my sleep, to feel safe by those that was to feel safe by those that were supposed to protect me and valued by people that had no concept of what the innocence of a child meant and rightfully what should have never been taken from me. Born into a family, I didn't feel I belonged from a very small child. People who didn't love me, though I loved them anyways. I'm in a place in my life where I'm meeting Ida for the first time. This experience will be never ending because as I believe to be a truth for myself, life has always changed. The goal is to practice being in the moment and living your purpose to the best you're humanly capable. I hope by writing this book, I'll be able to help other men and women who may have struggled with pain and healing from sexual, physical, mental, and emotional abuse or any other of its kind. Unknown value and esteem will no longer exist when we together can heal from the sadness in our hearts and make a difference in each other's lives through simply giving of oneself. I find that to be very simple, a kind thought, which can change into becoming a kind word and become a kind act. That to me is simply extending love to another human being. I know I, I, I had to kind of remember all the words. Oh, it's beautiful. And you did a wonderful job remembering. It's beautiful. I yeah, got a beautiful. little tripped up. I wrote that and um, I start right. I was in no time and I heard music playing and I thought it was behind me, but it was actually coming through the speakers of my computer and it was angelic music. And I looked up and I said, okay, I got you. And I knew that I was being prepared for something much bigger than what I could fully understand at the time and it's simply just to extend love and kindness to another human being however i can do that mm. yeah it's, thank you for it's sharing it's beautiful yeah. huh? you know i gotta i gotta oh, say man. ida that uh i got a lot of processing to do myself because i've been i've been looking for you and i didn't know you know found you already <laughs> years ago <laughs> Ain't that the way yeah. stuff works? Um, yeah. So it's nice to uh, know that. Yeah. This is a special. I'm moment. sorry, I've been mispronouncing your name for years. It's okay. <laughs> That's me. Sometimes I uh, force. But if you want to learn more, also, uh, Michael, I would highly recommend uh, checking out. And I'll see if I can find some of the videos. Dan Winters uh, does a great job of describing, um, you know, Anu, the wife. Uh, the the concubine Ida, the Palladian mother of Enki, and I don't know. I mean, it, it's been years, so but what yeah. I needed to get from it, I definitely did, and it helped me unravel some more. 
Um, By the way, you know, all of them are here in physical avatars, and I've met. We're all Anu. here. Everybody's here. Yeah, everyone's correct. here. But yeah. new is here, and he told me I, he's been. You know, actually, I call him Pops now, and he's been in my house under my same roof. And he told me he was known as Merlin and um, Metatron. I didn't know this. I'm just sharing information. But, you know, out of the whole family, everyone I've met, he's about the coolest, man. He's really like Jeff Bridges, the dude, you know. He's just carefree and just got a beautiful spirit and um, just almost unconditional love you know, for humanity and he's- uh, I think it's time. I mean, I don't think I know it. I know in, in my heart of hearts that it's time. It's time for us to come back together and, you know, let go of our, uh, you know, the, the, the desire to be um, superior or above anybody. And to, yeah. 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 Cause that's it's, just it's, nonsense. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But that's the ego self, right? Yeah. It's only the ego that wants to control anything. Really, I mean, uh, there, there's, I understand, you know, divine discipline. You do need that, I believe, and that, but not, not as a way of uh, manipulating or controlling, but to guide and teach. No, it's trying I to be am, a good I, hang, right? Yeah, you know? that's right. Absolutely. That's, that's all why there I is. Can, you know, you know, that's um, how I look at people. You're either a good hang or you're not. <laughs> We're all teachers and students, and I always remind myself, as much as I uh, believe I know, um, I don't know anything. I really don't. I, I, I just don't. And, and those things change as I grow and spiritually evolve anyways that new, new understandings, you know, I become aware of, and I become more expanded, and I see things from different people's perspectives, and it el helps me to, you know, maybe work through some shadows and realize that you know maybe i what i thought was one thing is now another for me and it's okay yeah. we don't have to you know one of the biggest things that they shared with me is you know learn to choose love relentlessly regardless of the outside appearance of things yeah that was it you know no matter Change how it presents on the outside because yeah. i found out a team bad cop man they can they can twist things and make things appear as what they're not to get you to accept that dark carrot. And when you just go, what else is available? Then the truth will unfold. And more than likely, you'll go, you know what? I, I was wrong. I wish now I know there's a different way. Because once you change your thought like that and you see your reality change, that's a truth that comes from within. No sure. books, no religions needed, you know? And you start to look at other things that, well, what else can I change, you know? That's right. Guys, thank you. I love you both. I appreciate you both. I love you I both, too. Contact. Thank you so much. Yeah, very good. This was a freaking amazing, amazing um, collaboration and discussion. And I appreciate yeah, I've learned a lot yeah. from you thank and you. Shane. So I, thank I mean, you both. Gonna, thank you. Yeah, this is going to be on my heart for, for some time. I'm going to be processing, but it's all good. Thank you, Shane. So much love to you. So much love to you both. Thank you. you too. Yep. So much love to you both. Yes. And uh, I'll be in touch with him. Yeah. So, so just expect yeah. to hear from me. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, we'll figure out another day and um, to pick up. Sounds good. Yep. Very good. Have a blessed evening. Thank you so much, both bye -bye. of you. Bye-bye. Right. Peace. Bye-bye.